Welcome. Uh, today we are on Tuesday and uh, we are sharing the word. There's no specific saint for today, not until tomorrow. So we'll take an opportunity to just open up in prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Almighty God, every good thing comes from you. Fill our hearts with love for you, increase our faith, and by your constant care, protect the good that you have given us. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Today we're looking at this first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. It's chapter 2, verses 10 to 16. Paul is instructing the Corinthians on the greatness of God's revelation. As each person alone knows his or her innermost thoughts, so God alone tells us his plan. We need the mind of Christ to know God's revelation. And so we hear Paul speaking about this to the Corinthian community. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit scrutinizes everything, even the depths of God, among men, who knows what pertains to the man except his spirit that is within? Similarly, no one knows that what pertains to God except the spirit of God. We have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may understand the things freely given us by God. And we speak about them not with words taught by human wisdom, but the, with the words taught by the spirit, describing spiritual realities in spiritual terms. Now the natural man does not accept what pertains to the Spirit of God, for to him it is foolishness, and he cannot understand it, because it is judged spiritually. The one who is spiritual, however, can judge everything, but is not subject to judgment by anyone. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to counsel him? but we have the mind of Christ. One word that has been used to describe Christian living is journey. An older and perhaps more uh, applicable word is struggle. You know, Paul um, describes the struggle between the spirit of Christ and the spirit of the world. It is an experience we all might have felt as we are torn by the dilemmas of our lives. So such a struggle can eventuate a growth towards Christian maturity and also Christian wisdom. It enables us to rise above the spirituality and outlooks that we had in a grammar school as we uh, develop the spiritual tools and the criteria, um, mechanism and strategies, Mechani mechanism. mechanisms and strategies for dealing with adult life and also Christian ways. So these are the materials of an appraisal of spiritual and secular things that Paul describes. Their use it results in our gradually um, appropriation to the mind of Christ. Slowly we begin to be able to think like the Lord. So if our eyes are focused on him and we are continually looking at the person of Jesus as we make our journey, then um, because we have taken in what he has said and we have taken in what he has done and we have taken in how he lives, then that becomes a real part of us. And we allow then that reality to take part of who we are. And thus then 
that same reality begins to be practiced by us to others. And so we're really bringing in this journey um, and in um, our struggles, we bring the person of Jesus to our journey. We bring the person of Jesus to our struggles and to those around us and their struggles. And really, really makes a difference. And that's, I think, what happened to that early Christian community. They brought Jesus to their struggle. And um, they learned from Jesus that he was never, ever afraid because he had such a deep trust and confidence in his Father. And so as he had a deep trust and confidence in his Father, those early Christians had a deep trust and confidence in Jesus. So it made them unafraid to die. They were um, placed in situations where, you know, maybe um, they had a little fear, but the fear didn't overtake them to the point that um, they were not allowing their death to have meaning. Um, so they put their trust and their confidence in the person of Jesus and they say, I die for Christ Jesus. And all of a sudden, that's what gave the listeners around when they heard those words um, an impact of saying, my gosh, these people, belief in Jesus must be really strong because they're not just dying. They're, they're dying because of their love for Jesus. And they proclaimed it. They proclaimed and this, this was a concept that was very foreign to that culture at that time because mm. I, I'm forgetting my history in you know, a Western Civilization 101. Uh, if, they re, if the Romans and, and some of what we call pagan peoples had an idea of the afterlife, you know, did they, did they just think you know, life is, is from birth to death and that's it? And and we just we live to eat and and uh, breathe and uh, live a daily life and that's all that the investment is. And that's uh, that's really what happens, especially in uh, the Roman era, because of the fact that you know when Caesar pro proclaims himself a god, mm -hmm. and he's saying everything is for me, and he abuses everything, mm -hmm. so um, then. Um, he takes everything for himself. And uh, so when he dies, um, the whole place falls apart unless there is an absolute heir, which in many cases there wasn't. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so they, they lived under a very uh, barbaric and patriarchal society. Right. But when they saw, as you said, the examples of these martyrs, all the early Christians that were martyred, they were awed and astounded. Some people, you know, I, I said, too bad, you're bad luck. But many people that watched what was going on, that saw them being carted off, thousands and thousands of people uh, sacrificed in the arena, our early Christian martyrs, they, that sparked questions in their hearts and souls. These uh, people have something. And see, what, the, what they had was something that didn't cost anything. So those who had money couldn't see the reality. You can't but, buy it. Yeah, that's right. And those who were poor could see the reality and say, that can be mine, and so I want that for myself. And so they then would follow the Master's ways and his truths and live up to that reality. Um, and very few of the wealthy ever came uh, to Jesus just because of the fact that um, they were able to do and have what they wanted when they wanted it. And so there was no need for anyone who would respect them um, in their personhood. But yet the poor, um, they recognized Jesus, they recognized his respect, they recognized his love, and he was faithful to his promises. And so they said, I want to be like them. Because look, even in death, they are proclaiming his glory. And that was very, very unique. Come back tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>